Let's have a look at this guy. Now, again, remember how I said to you, I'm pushing on this a little further. I'm not just giving the, uh, the standard, easy uses of general solution. I'm going for ones that are a little more interesting and sort of raise more questions for us, okay? So here's one that doesn't even look like it's a general solution problem at all. There's something, there's one thing that tells you this has to be a general solution problem. There's something that's there, or should I say, there's something that's not there. Yep, yeah, there's, there's no restriction on X, yeah? So it's like, look, I may just want, what, like the first couple, or the first ones over here, I want all of them. So if you see that, no domain, they might be nice to you and say, find the general solution of. But as it stands at the moment, that's the only solution you can find, because you need all of them. Now before we launch into it, when you see this question just on the face of it, you can solve this question in a restricted domain. You already know how to do this. How would you do it if I didn't if you didn't know anything about general solution? Yeah. Yeah, look at this. That's a wave function, that's a wave function. The sum of two wave functions is another wave function. Okay? And we will have a look at that in a second. Yes. Okay, you can do some division if you're willing to exclude some solutions, right? And then you have to test them afterwards. So that's another way we can do this. Many ways to peel an onion. Here's the way I'm going to show us. Uh, I'm going to show you two ways to do this using what you know about general solution. Here's where I'm going to be in. Which one shall I do first? Let's do close. Okay, so I'm going to kick this sine term over to the other side. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. The reason why I have it, why I'm going in this direction, is because I'm trying to get cos of something is cos of something else. Or alternatively, sine of something is sine of something else. If I can get it in that form, I can use these general solutions very nicely and neatly. Does that make sense? So that's the direction I'm heading in. Now, of course, the problem at the moment is I don't have a cos and a cos, or a sine and a sine. There's lots of ways you can resolve this. Okay? I'm just going to show you one way because I think it's fun. Minus sine x. What does it look like? Um, if you just think about it from 0 to 2 pi, you know what regular sine x looks like. So this guy is upside down, right? So this is what negative, uh, that's not very good. That's what the general shape of negative sine x looks like. Yep. Now what I want is to turn that into some version of cosine, okay? Now I should be able to do this because the relationship between sine and cosine is a, it's a phase shift relationship, right? If I just move sideways, I should be able to get to a version of cosine. So the question is, which way would you like me to move? And I can, I've got a whole bunch of different ways. I think moving to the right is probably the quickest way, right? Let's just think about if I take this shape and move it pi on two to the right, why am I choosing pi on two? Because it's the difference between phase. Because it's the difference between sine and it's complement, right? Complement of sine. So I'm gonna move a pi on two radius to the right. Um, that shape's going to look something like, well, let's see, that. That's the part of it that I've got. What's the part I'm missing? It's, it's this guy over here. Look at that. If I move this part units to the right, that's exactly the same graph. Do you see that? So what am I going to write here? I want this is cos of something. Okay. So in the green, I've got regular cosine. And in the blue, I've got a version of cosine that's gone pi on two radians to the, think, think, here's cosine. If I wanted to move cosine back onto this graph, which is the one I want, which way has it gone? It's gone to the left, right? Because we've just done this in reverse. So therefore, I could write this as x, I've gone to the left, so it's plus pi on two. See that? We know how shifts work. They're a bit backwards to the sides. Okay, so this is kind of sweet because I can say cause of something, cause of something else. That's really, really nice. So I'm just going to launch straight into my general solution. What's the general solution for cosine? 2n pi, pi, pi plus or minus whatever cos inverse of this thing is, right? So that's 2n pi plus or minus this guy. Yeah? Okay, so when you have a look at that, you think, hmm. Again, I want to do some simplifying here, but like with um, inverse sine, right? Sorry, sine, the general solution. You've got two branches because of the switchy thing. I've got two branches here too. So I'm going to separate them out. So I'm going to go over here and here. I'll do the negative case first, and then I'll do the positive one. 
Here's what I get when I think about the minus. Okay? That's just me taking the minus sign and uh, expanding out the brackets. What would the uh, right hand side look like? What happens when I take the positive sign? X equals what? Someone help me out. 2 and pi plus x plus pi on 2. Okay, now, the reason I wrote both of them is I've got both my cases and then I can solve them. But before I even put pen to paper, I notice something a little bit weird. A little bit weird. Hmm, yeah, you look at this right hand side, right? And you're like, oh, well the normal thing to do is to subtract x from both sides. And then you realize, uh-oh, there's a problem here. So what does this mean about this branch of the equation? No there's no x you can put in there that will make that right hand side true. So I'm not going to get any solutions from that branch of my, my two parts of the general solution. Dealt with him. Let's come over to this guy. Okay. What am I going to do this time? I'm going to add. This leaves me with 2n pi. 2n pi. Minus. minus pi on 2. And then I only have to do one more thing to get my solution, which is 